implement DHCP before. This topology, okay, two forty three twenty one routers, two twenty nine sixty switches, two PCs. R1, R2, minus 1, S2, PCA, PCB, uh, gigabit 0, 0 between routers, 0, 0, 0 on both sides. You can be 001 from router to fast Ethernet file on switch. On R2, you can be 001 on router to fast Ethernet file on the switch. And fast Ethernet 6 from S1 to PC. And fast Ethernet 18 on S2 to PC. Addressing table okay. R one R two S one S two PCA PCB Incomplete addressing table. Bilan table, bilance 1, 100, 1000. Required resources on real up to routers 4221. Two switches 2960, two PCs, console cables, Ethernet cables. Build a network. Establish an addressing scheme. Subnet the uh, 192.168.1024 to meet the following requirements. One subnet. Subnet A supporting 58 hosts. The client belong on R1. Okay, 182.168.1024 uh, prefix. Okay, the Subnet A, 58 hosts. Place this base network address here. Uh, the first two octets on decimal, 192, 168. Last two octets in binary. One in binary is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0 in binary, 8 zeros last two octets in binary first two octets on decimal last two octets in binary okay the requirement is 58 hosts here on host 62 is a good number so this will be the new subnet mask copy this Copy this and fill the remaining spaces with ones. This is the network address 192.168.1.0. Okay. 1.0. Subnet mask is this uh, 8 bits here plus 8 bits 16 plus 8 bits 24, 25, 26 bits. 26 bits and this is the broadcast ok 
okay, the broadcast address, and this is this number is 63. If this is 64, this is uh, 63. Broadcast 192, 168, 163, prefix 26, the same prefix. So the first hop IP address is 192, 168. One, one, one IP next to the network, same subnet mask or prefix, and last IP host is one IP before the broadcast, so A62 prefix 26. Okay, subnet day is this subnet, this network address. Record the first IP address in the addressing table for R1 GB001. 100. Okay, this is the first one that one prefix 26. And here. When I do a 68 one that one. Um, prefix 26, so the subnet mask is 255, 255, 255. 26 is 182. Record the second IP address in the address table for S1 VLAN 200 and enter the associated default gateway. Okay, remember uh, this uh, subnet A supporting 2058 hosts, uh, the client belong at R1 is uh, client client belong at R1 is belongs to belong uh, 100 and also belongs to subinterface 1.100. Okay, but Look at the following and record the second IP address in the other table of S1 VLAN 200 and enter the associated default gateway. Okay, uh, okay and here uh, is VLAN 100, VLAN 100, the client, client or client's VLAN. Okay, and um, okay, goes uh, as one belong two hundred. The second IP address is uh, if the first is one eight two one sixty eight one one, the second is one eight two one sixty eight one two, and can be assigned to S one belong two hundred. But this is not uh, this is an an error. This is an issue. Because if you are working on VLAN uh, on VLAN 100 that also belongs to subinterface 100, there is no reason to assign um, an IP address on VLAN 100 to a device placed on VLAN 200. So there is no reason for that. This is an error. And this is an issue. Uh, I will not do it. Uh, I think this is this is not uh, this is an issue. This is an, an error. Okay. Okay. One subnet. Subnet B supports twenty eight hosts. Management belong at R one. Okay. Management belong at R one is uh, two hundred belong. 28 hosts, subnet B. Subnet B, 28 hosts, VLAN 200. The management VLAN. And find the next number of this. The next number is the following. 192, The next number of Six ones is one followed by six zeros. And 28 hosts, 
go to cause and here is a good number and this is the new subnet mask copy this and fill the remaining spaces with ones and this this number is 64 so the network address is 182.168.164 and the prefix is 8 bits here plus 8 bits here 16 plus 8 bits here 24 25 26 27 27 and this is the broadcast 64 plus 31 if this is 32 this is 31 64 plus 31 182 168 uh, 95 okay 64 plus uh, 31 and prefix 27 the same prefix uh, the first ip is uh, 65 one next to the network and last ip is uh, 94 one before the broadcast okay very good and um, okay subnet b is this this network million 200 subnet b uh, 64 prefix 27 record the first IP address in the addressing table for R1 gigabit 001.200 this sub interface the first IP okay, for this gigabit 001 to that 200 the first IP 192.168.165 prefix 27 27 in decimal is 224 Okay, the second IP for S1 VLAN 1 and enter the associated default gateway. Okay, for VLAN 1, okay, S1 VLAN 1 and on the table says S1 VLAN 200. Okay. This is the only interface for S1 VLAN 200, and I think here should be S1 VLAN 200. Okay, and change this to S1 VLAN 200, and enter the associated default gateway and S1 VLAN 200. In this case, is. Uh, um, place the second IP address of VLAN 200 to S1 that is placed on interface VLAN 200. Okay, this is very good. And but uh, the sub interface, the network is placed on VLAN 200 and the interface also placed on VLAN 200. That is very good. Okay. So says the second. The, if the first is one that sixty five, the second is one that sixty six. One eighty one sixty eight one that sixty six um, prefix twenty seven. Okay, twenty twenty seven is two twenty four. And the default gateway. The default gateway is the interface on the router. In this case, subinterface you got zero zero one dot two hundred. Okay, for S one, the default gateway is the interface you got zero zero one on the router. But router has uh, three uh, subinterfaces on you got zero zero one, and is this on the same VLAN? Subinterface two hundred, VLAN two hundred. Okay, and um, VLAN 200. So this is the default gateway. Okay, the default gateway is placed on the same VLAN. Continue. Subnet C is supporting 12 host client network at R2. Okay, subnet C. Subnet 
subnet C 12 hosts client network on R2 uh, on R2 this is the connection between R1 and R2 and this is the network for R2 and R2 does not have sub-interfaces okay it's only one uh, missing network gigabit 001 on R2 is placed on this this network okay um, subnet C 12 host R2 lang okay and what is the next number for this is the following 192.168.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
The tip also can have an IP address, but uh, it's recommended to to not assign IP address on the native. Okay, and you can place here on topology. R2 subnet, 192.168.1. One. Uh, 96, prefix 28. Okay, this is the network, network address 96. Okay, network address 96. And the connection between R1 and R2. This is 10, 0, 0, 0, prefix 30. Okay, here. And here, three belongs, uh, two belongs. Belong 100, uh, 0, 26, and belong 200, uh, 64, prefix 27. Cable the network already done. Configure basic settings for each router. These configurations were, were made in another labs for security and for basic settings. Uh, for me, uh, are optional. Uh, I will only assign a device name for the routers. Configure intervillian routing on R1. Activate gigabit 001 on the router. Okay, I recommend to activate uh, when you configure sub interfaces for intervillian routing. I recommend to activate the interface at the end. First, configure sub interfaces. Okay, first, configure sub interfaces for each VLAN as required by the IP address ad addressing table. All sub interfaces uses. AO2, that one Q encapsulation, and are assigned the first usable address for the IP address pool you have calculated. Ensure the subinterface for native VLAN does not have an IP address assigned. Include a description for each sub interface. Okay, remember. Uh, Go to R1, command line interface, no enable configure terminal, host name, don't forget that, R1, enter. Okay, first use sub interfaces, gigabit 001.100, interface gigabit 001.100, enter. And look at this. Uh, AO2.1Q encapsulation encapsulation dot one Q. Okay, and remember sub interface one dot one hundred belongs to VLAN one hundred clients. So dot one Q one hundred enter. Now the IP address and subnet mask. IP address 182.168.1.1, subnet mass 182, add, uh, include description, okay, description. For example, you can use any description, it's only a label, but you can create, uh, you can use uh, the name of the belong. Clients. Okay, enter. Now, next sub interface to that 200. That 200. Encapsulation uh, belongs to VLAN 200, and the IP address is 65. 
and subnet mask 224. 224. Okay, um, I am configuring this. Enter. In the description, you can use the name of the VLAN management. Okay, this VLAN 200 management. Enter. Okay, also sub interface 1000. Encapsulation dot one Q uh, sub interface dot one thousand belongs to VLAN one thousand and is the native. Okay, and the native uh, is number one thousand and use the native keyword. Okay, very very uh, important. Enter In description native. Okay. I'm not using IP address here because addressing table says uh, do not use IP. Uh, so interface for native land does not have an IP address. Okay. And at the end, at the end, activate interface gigabit 001. Go to physical interface gigabit 001, no shutdown. Enter. Very good. Configure gigabit 001 on R2, then gigabit 000. And static routing for both routers. Configure gigabit 001 on R2 with the first IP address of subnet C. You calculated Ailer. Configure gigabit 00 for each router based on the IP address table. Okay, on R2, configure both interfaces, R2, command line interface, no, enable, configure, terminal, hostname, R2, don't forget, interface, you got to be 000, okay, the first interface, and the IP address. 10002, zero, zero, subnet mask 252, no shutdown. Second, gigabit 001, IP address, 192.168.197, prefix to 40, no shutdown. And don't forget the gigabit 000 on R1. Okay, go to R1. IP address 10 0 0 0 1 no shutdown okay sorry uh, gigabit 0 0 1 no shutdown enter okay uh, interfaces uh, should be green triangles they are enabled Configure the phone route on each router pointed to the IP address of gigabit 00 on the other router. That means use the NetHub IP address. Okay, the phone route. Okay, on R1, exit. On global configuration mode, configure the default route, IP route. And the NetHub IP address of R1 is gigabit 00 on R2. And gigabit 00 on R2 is 10, 10, 0, 2. 10, okay, is uh, 10, 0, 0, 2. 10, 0, 0, 2. And there. Uh, the same way on R2, uh, go to R2, exit on global configuration mode, IP route. And the next hop IP address for R2 is gigabit 00 on R1. And gigabit 00 on R1 is 10.0.0.1. 10.0.0.1, enter. Verify a static routing is working 
by pinning R2 gigabit 001 address from R2. Okay, from R1, ping R2 gigabit 001. We go to R1 and on privilege exit mode, ping the IP address of gigabit 001 on R2. And this IP address is 97. 192.168.197. Success. That means static routing is working very well, and you can continue. Save running configuration to start off configuration. You can do this for me, it's optional. Um, okay. Uh, obviously, on real lab, this is very, very important. Necessary. Configure basic settings for each switch. Okay. These configurations were made in another labs, uh, so I will only configure the device name. Any other uh, basic configurations for me is optional. Create bilance on S1. Create the name, the required bilance on switch S1 from the table above. Okay, on S1, create the bilance. Click on S1. Command line interface, enter. Enable configure terminal. Host name S1, enter. And uh, This is the VLAN table. VLAN 1 is the default VLAN, so it's already created by default on the switch. Create all these VLANs. VLAN 100, name, client, VLAN 200, name, management, VLAN 999, name, parking lot. VLAN 1000, name, native, enter, exit. Configure and activate the management interface on S1, uh, interface VLAN 200. And also the default gateway. Okay, configure this on S1, interface VLAN. 200, 200, IP address, 182.168.1.66, subnet mask 224, enter, no, shut down, exit, IP default, gateway, 182.168.165, okay, enter, okay, all this configuration. Configure and activate the management interface on S2, VLAN 1, using the IP address and the default gateway. Okay, configure all this on S2. Go to S2. Command line interface, enter. Enable configure terminal, host name S2. Interface VLAN 1. IP address 192.168.1.98. Subnet mask to 40. Enter. No shutdown. Exit. IP the file gateway. 192.168.1.97. Okay, is this this configuration? Be careful and. Uh, Assign all ingested ports on S1 to the parking lot VLAN. Configure them for a static access mode and administratively deactivate them. Okay, go to S1, on S1, click here, and port uh, 5 and 6 in use. 
interface range for settlement one to three and sorry one to four five and six in use so for settlement uh, seven to twenty four and gigabit zero one and two okay to parking lot belong and parking lot parking lot belong is belong uh, 999 okay okay uh, parking lot belong is parking the name is parking underscore lot in my case i use a parking lot uh, it's different but no so different and don't worry about this um, Okay, assign this uh, and also um, static access mode. Static access mode, switch port mode access. Now, access to VLAN uh, 999 is switch port access VLAN 999 is the uh, parking lot VLAN. Enter. Deactivate them. Shut down. Enter, enter. On S2, administratively deactivate all the unused ports. Okay, on S2, in use 18 and 5. Okay, on S2, interface range. Okay, be careful on S2. False Ethernet 1 to 4. 5 in use, so false Ethernet 6 to 17. 18 in. Okay. 0, 06 to 17. 18 in use, so false Ethernet 19 to 24 and gigabit 0, 1 and 2. Enter. Shut down. Very good. Okay. Okay, but you can also uh, configure them for static access mode. Okay. Switch port mode access. Okay, this this range of interfaces on S2 to a static mode access, switch port mode access. Very good. Interface range command is helpful to accomplish this task with as few commands as necessary. Assign belongs to the correct switch interfaces. Assign user port to the appropriate VLAN, specify it in VLAN table, and co configure them for static access mode. Okay, go to VLAN table and very fast. Look at this on S2 facet Ethernet 18. Place it on VLAN 1. Okay, S2 facet Ethernet 18. Switch port mode access. Okay. okay. Static access. Okay. Static access modes. Static access mode. Enter. And switch port access. Milan 1. Enter. Okay, this command, uh, this line is not necessary because by default, facet 18 and all ports by default are assigned to VLAN 1. Okay. VLAN 100 on S1, facet 6. S1, facet 6. Okay, so here. PCA belongs to VLAN 100. Okay, S1 for Saturn 6. And see interface for Saturn 6. Switch port mode access. Access VLAN 100. VLAN 200, S1 VLAN 200. This is already configured when you configure it uh, when you configure it interface VLAN 200 with IP address. Okay. 
999 to parking lot. This is the range of unused ports on S1. Already done. Okay, here. Very good. And verify. Go to S1, for example, and show VLAN brief. Enter. Okay, VLAN 1, by default, assign it to Facetnet, Facetnet 5, VLAN 100, assign it to Facetnet 6, all unused ports to Facetnet to VLAN 999. And uh, very good. Why is interface Facetnet 5 listed under VLAN 1? Okay, look at this Facetnet 5 listed to VLAN 1. Port 5 is in the default VLAN and has not been configured as an AO2.1Q trunk. Okay, this is facet node 5 and is the connection to R1 and should be configured as trunk interface. And for now, belongs to VLAN 1 by default. Manually configure S1 interface facet node 5 as an AO2 1Q trunk. Change the switch port mode on the interface to force trunking. Okay, on S1, configure terminal interface, facet terminal 5, switch port mode trunk, enter, enter, very good. Set an ATV LAN 1000, switch port trunk, ATV LAN 1000, enter. As another part of the trunk configuration, specify that VLANs 100, 200, and 1000 are allowed to cross the trunk. Switch port trunk allowed VLAN 100, 200, 1000. Okay, 100, 200, 1000. Enter. Type running configuration. Okay, do this on real lab. Very important for me. It's optional. Verify and show interface trunk on S1. Okay, on S1. Show interface trunk. Facet Ethernet 5 now. Mode static on. Encapsulation is AO2.1Q. Status trunking native VLAN 1000. VLAN allow it. 100, 200, 1000. At this point, what IP address would the PCs have if they were connected to the network using DHCP? Okay, PCA, uh, change to DHCP and PCB change to DHCP. Okay. DHCP failed. APIPA is being used. The range is 169-254 and the next numbers, the next two octets are random numbers. In PCB, DHCP failed. API PI is being used. The first two octet 169, 254, and the next number are random numbers. In both cases, the subnet mass is 255, 255, 00. So the answer here is they would uh, self configure with an automatic private IP address. API PI in the 169 254 range. Configure and verify to DHCP before servers on R1. 
you will configure and verify the HCP before server on R1. The DHCP before server will service two subnets, subnet A and subnet C. Remember, subnet A is uh, subnet A is VLAN 100 and subnet C is uh, R2 LAN. Subnet A is VLAN 100 and subnet C is this subnet, the LAN on R2. Configure R1 with the ICP before pools for the two supported subnets. Only the DHCP pool for subnet A is given below. Exclude the first five usable addresses for each address pool. Okay, R1. Enter enable configure terminal IP DHCP excluded dash address and set the range. For the first subnet, this is the first subnet, VLAN 100. Okay, subnet A is VLAN 100. This is the IP addresses for hosts from 1 to 62. So the first 5 is from 1 to 5. 192.168.11 from 1 to 192.168.15. Okay, excluded addresses 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. That means you will not list these IP addresses. These IP addresses will not be used for DHCP. Enter. Now for this subnet, 96 subnet, is the subnet C, R2 LAN. The range is from 97 to 110, but the first five are 97, 98, 99, 100, and 101. From 97 to 101. From 97 to 101. Create the DHCP pool, use a unique name for each pool. Okay, the first pool for VLAN 100, remember the network address 10. Okay, IP DHCP pool, use a name for example VLAN 100. Enter the network address. This network address 10 prefix 26. 192.168.1.0 prefix 26 and 26 is 192. Enter. Okay, this is the network. This is the network. Uh, configure domain name ccna lab. Domain name ccna lab.com. Default gateway, default router. Okay, for this network, the default gateway is the first IP. The subinterface on R1. And for VLAN 100, for VLAN 100, the subinterface 100 is 1.1. 1 .1, so this is the default gateway. Okay, 182.168.1.1, enter. Configure the list time for two days and 12 hours and 30 minutes. Okay. List two days, 12 hours, 30 minutes, enter. Okay, Pocket Tracer does not support this command, but this is the correct command. This is very good. Configure the second DHCP before pool using the pool name r2 underscore client underscore lang. 
and then calculated network default router use the same domain and list time for the previous DHCP pool okay DH, IP DHCP pool r2 underscore client underscore lan okay enter Okay, remember for subnet C, the network address is 96 prefix 28. 96 prefix 28. 1.96 prefix 28 is to 40. Enter. The default router is for this subnet, the default router is gigabit 001 on R2. Gigabit 001 on R2 97. Go to R1 97. Enter. The my name, the same the my name, ccna-lab.com. The same uh, list, two days, 12 hours, 30 minutes, enter. Pocket Tracer does not support this command, but this is the command. Okay, and ready. Excluded addresses for the first subnet, excluded addresses for the second subnet, DHCP pool for the first subnet, DHCP pool for the second subnet. Save your configurations, do this on real app, very important, and verify. Show IP DHCP pool, okay, on R1, and um, privilege accept mode, show IP D DHCP pool, enter. Okay, for pool VLAN 100 and for pool R2 client LAN. List addresses, one address listed to PCA. Click on PCA and verify you get an IP address. Okay, and the full gateway is missing. Go to static, again DHCP. Okay, now you have IP address six. Remember, excluded IP addresses are from one to five. So the first available IP for DHCP is six. Correct subnet mask, correct uh, default gateway, very good. So that's why list listed IP addresses one. How many addresses are available? 62. Okay, for pool R2 client LAN, no listed addresses. Okay, click on PCB. Um, PCB is still using DHCP failed API PA is being used. 169 to 54 others. Okay, this is expected because later you will configure R2 to use the DHCP pool on R1. Okay, don't worry. Um, show DHCP, show IP DHCP bindings. Show IP DHCP bindings. Enter. Okay, binding. Enter. Okay, this command works. Uh, this is the listed IP address one six, and this is the MAC address. Click on PCA one six. Close this command prompt. IP config slash all space slash all. Enter. 
uh, Mac or Harvard 00 is 0 F9 52 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 0 so IP DHCP server statistics. Enter. Okay. Packet tracer does not support this command. A real device will support this. Attempt to acquire an IP address from DHCP on PCA. Okay, on PCA, use ipconfig renew command, then verify with ipconfig. Okay, go to PCA uh, on command prompt. Okay, it's already configured, okay, to use DHCP, but in command prompt, you can renew your IP address, ipconfig, space, slash, renew, enter, and wait a moment. Okay, 1.6, subnet mask default gateway, very good. Uh, ipconfig to verify, ipconfig, very good. Test connectivity by pinning R1 gigabit 001 interface IP address. Okay, from PCA, ping R1, gigabit 001. So that's mean to ping the default gateway of this PC. Okay, ping the default gateway is 182.168.11. Success. It's uh, working very well. Configure and verify the HCP relay on R2. You will configure R2 to relay DHCP requests from the local layer network on interface gigabit 001 to DHCP server R1. Okay, uh, PCB is trying to get an IP address. Using DHCP, PCB is trying to get an IP address from R2. But R2 doesn't have a server, a DHCP server configured on it. Does not have a DHCP server. The pool for this subnet is placed on R1, so you need to configure R2 DHCP relay. Okay, and point to R1 to know that here is the DHCP pool. Configure R2 as a DHCP relay agent for LAN on gigabit 001. Okay, configure on gigabit 001 because the request for PCB will will be done on gigabit 001 on R2. So configure on R1. Okay, go to R2, enable configure terminal interface gigabit 00001. Enter. And do the following IP helper dash address. And where is the the pool on R1 and the IP address of gigabit 00 on R1 is the IP address of gigabit 00 on R1 is the following 10.0.0.1 R2 10.0.0.1 and now R2 knows that the pool is placed on R1. Okay, go to PC to PCB and now PCB has an IP address. Remember the excluded addresses on this subnet uh, were from 97 to 101, 101. So the first available for list is 102. Subnet mass in the full gateway. Okay, IP config renew. Also, you can do this on command prompt. IP config 
space slash renew enter wait a moment okay 102 very good ip config to verify test connectivity you can ping from pcb to pca ping to pca pca ip address is 1.6 and I do 168.1.6. Very good. Ping uh, as one IP address. Okay, 666. 66. Success, uh, repeat again. Okay, all success. Ping to S2, 98. Success. Show IP the HCP binding on R2. Okay, and show ip dhcp binding enter okay no information because the server is placed on r1 not on r2 so go to r1 show ip dhcp binding okay 16 for pca and 1.102 for pcb okay the mac address of of PCB, okay, IP config slash all. This is the MAC address for PCB. Okay, very good. Show IP DHCP server statistics on R1. Server statistics packet tracer does not support this command, but you can use uh, show IP DHCP pool. Okay, for pool VLAN 100, one listed IP for R2 client LAN pool, one listed IP. Very good. Thank you very much.